Today's Gospel reading is from the fourth chapter of John. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one who is now you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored so that you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a lot said about water this morning as we hear Jesus ask a Samaritan woman for a drink. It's a familiar story, 
but there is more to the story than we initially see. If we believe generations of creatures, this story is about a sinful woman whose sexual wantonness is discovered. And it's about Jesus telling her how many husbands she has had and how she is not a wife to the current one. And with the placement in this story in the readings for the Lenten season, the emphasis is on sex and repentance and purity. Except it's not. This isn't a story about morality. It has nothing to do with making a point about adultery. It certainly doesn't say anything about the wanton behavior of the men mentioned in this story. And have you ever noticed that nothing is said about the men's behavior? Stories with women at the center don't happen very often in scripture. I learned on Twitter this week, and I did verify the source, that only 49 women in the Bible are named, and only 93 women speak. They collectively say 14,056 words, which is roughly 1.1% of the total words in the Bible. The woman at the well has a speaking part in the story, and that's a really big deal. And yet, that is not what is lifted up most of the time. Instead, in the words of the Queen of Lasdell, it is seen as a miniature morality lesson with a woman as a tawdry example. Dr. Blasdell continues by reminding us that Eve is castigated as the one through whom sin and death entered the world, and all who her descendant sisters bear her stain. Not very often do you hear a preacher extol Eve as the mother of the human brace or the preached pleasing partner of the first man created in God's image. But the biblical story tells us all of that. And then there is Mary Magdalene, friend of Jesus, one of his first disciples. We usually see her as a whore and a harlot. How often have you heard her celebrated as the first witness of the resurrection, as a teacher of the faith, as one of the first apostles? Women show up infrequently in our Bible stories, so infrequently, in fact, that when they are there, it should be a signal to us to look deeper, to look more closely, and to wait because an important message is coming. To be honest, though, we can tell from the dialogue in this story that the woman at the well is not going to be a great example of goodness. But this is the longest conversation in the New Testament between Jesus and anybody. It's a longer conversation than Jesus had with Nicodemus in last week's Gospel lesson. The woman at the well is one of only 93 women in the New Testament 93 women in the whole Bible, in fact, who speak. And her words are more than 1% of the total words spoken by women. In other words, there has to be something more to this story than how important it is to have five husbands. Now consider the specifics of this story. Jesus asks the woman for a drink. And she expresses some astonishment at why he a Jew, a man, would ask her, a Samaritan woman. And then he says to her that if she only knew who he was, she'd be asking him for a drink of living water. And she says, okay, may I have a drink of this water? And he says, go call your husband. And at this point, she's still talking about well water. And while that's the drink that Jesus initially asked for, it's not the water that he's offering to her. So still with well water on her mind, she continues the conversation and she doesn't go call her husband. After the woman realizes that Jesus is the Messiah, after she realizes what he's been talking about as living water, she takes her new and tentative and shallow and not yet fully formed faith and runs to tell someone about it. But she's not just going to the man in her life, she's going to the whole city. 
She ran back to tell the people who had probably had shunned her, the ones who had probably been gossiping about her, the ones who made it too uncomfortable for her to go get water in the cool of the day when they were drawing water. Her growing faith and her joy in identifying Jesus as the Messiah superseded anything and everything her neighbors had said about her and done to her. She wanted to share the good news with everyone. And they believed her enough to come and see for themselves. That's the high point of this story. And it all got started when she believed, and then she told someone else about her belief that Jesus is the Messiah. Now her understanding may have been incomplete, but it's enough to get people interested enough to come and see for themselves. This woman, who is often remembered badly in church history for her sexual relationships, who would not have been considered a credible witness, is a disciple. This woman whose witness was only as strong as, he can't be the Messiah, can he? Brought many to faith. This woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, is a disciple. So my friends, if you think that your faith is too weak or confused or partial or new, think about her. She had more questions than answers, but the whole town followed her invitation to see Jesus. When we think we have to know all the answers, it's really hard to talk about our faith. But when we realize it's okay to have questions, it's okay to have doubts, even in the midst of faith, we find it's much easier to share. One of this congregation's beloved Christmas hymns is Go Tell It on the Mountain. We love that hymn, we love to sing it, but we're not so good at actually telling the good news. But that is what today's gospel story is all about. It's not really about a woman at a well. It's about Jesus and the living water poured out from his hand. In this time of chaos in the world, when we might actually have more time for reflection because of everything that's getting canceled, consider this. When you are asked for a drink of water, what will you offer from your own well?